Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawi Allah. Uh, only to give all praise and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Peace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth uh, that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. I'm doing this lesson um, just because I've uh, seen this guy, uh, Noir 44K, and uh, this guy has been, you know, basically bringing out a lot of false doctrine, of course, as we know that there is a lot of Negro lights out here, meaning Negro only Israelites. And uh, because of that, uh, these guys don't even have true understanding of doctrine. And this is how we know that uh, y'all's doctrine is false because when you push something like all Negro only, and then y'all go to scriptures concerning, you know, uh, the proper understanding of lineages going through, you know, the father seed, um, and also going into things concerning, you know, illegitimate births and things like that. Uh, we see that y'all have zero understanding of that and y'all don't go precept upon precept. And in addition to that, a lot of these people focus on, you know, certain information that they're really getting from from uh, people that are trying to corrupt the scriptures, okay? Particularly, you know, Edomites that are trying to change the narrative of what it means to really be an Israelite. As we know that um, there's a lot of different doctrines concerning, you know, how one would be an Israelite, whether or not it's through their father or mother. And we know that some of this doctrine that's out there, all right, among these Khazars, all right, or these Israeliers, all right, that are over there in our land, um, also known as Jewish people, that they say stuff that you're, seed your your descendancy or your nationality in the scriptures is actually determined by who your mother is and not who your father is which is a lie okay now this particular guy he put up the scripture he put up a different translation i will get the king james he's this is deuteronomy 23 and 2 he says one of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of yah even to the tenth generation none of his descendants shall enter the congregation of yah and then he says anybody got a problem with it with common sense let me know well this guy doesn't have common sense because he doesn't understand the scriptures now i'm going to go to the other post he posted before okay because this guy was actually supposed to debate debate um uh i believe haka all right from sakari on sunday and he ducked he ducked the debate and he was actually you know screaming for it and many of his followers were wanting him to do it but this guy clearly would get destroyed because of his lack of understanding, neither does he even have resources to back up, you know, on a historical level, some of his claims concerning who Israel is, okay? And a lot of these guys, they're more concerned with the, with looking a certain way than actually, you know, who is following, you know, the Lord in righteousness, okay? Now, I'm going to go into this one. He uses this King James definition, okay, of bastard, which this is, uh, we'll, we'll go into this and we'll show you that what it really means. Now, he says here, bastard noun a natural child, a child begotten and born out of wedlock, an illegitimate or spurious child. Okay, now when you go into the scriptures, there's a different meanings of, of a bastard, okay? A bastard is also one who is not, uh, does not have a father that's raising him. As you know that in the scriptures and epistles, it tells you that if the Lord is not, does not chasten you uh, for, you know, for your wrongdoings, all right, making you feel bad, or punishing us for any wrongdoings, then then ye are bastards, meaning that you're not his, okay? So that is one way. If you go into the way it was spoken uh, growing up among, you know, our four parents, basically our grandfathers, you know, because we're in a new speak era, by the way, as well. They used to call someone a bastard if no one knew who their daddy was, okay? If a kid did not know who his dad was, he was called a bastard. If a kid was being raised, um, you know, in an environment with, you know, with their siblings and uh, they had no father around, all right, unless they were widowed, meaning that it was known who their father was because their dad may have passed, that's different. But if a kid was raised in a house where there was no man, no one knows who the father is, the woman doesn't know who the father is, that kid was coined a bastard. Right, because that kid could not prove uh, their lineage. Okay. In addition, you also have another term for bastard, which we'll get into as well. And we'll show it based on precept upon precept or line upon line. Now, it says here, uh, the child, or by the civil and canon laws, a bastard becomes le a legitimate child by the intermarriage of the parents at any future time. 
but by the laws of this country as by those of England, okay, because they're going by England, a child to be legitimate must at least be born after lawful marriage, okay? Now, he brings the same precept as before. I'm going to go to this next slide he had. Uh, he also goes into the other one. Now, we're going to go into this bottom one, bastard, a begotten born and born out of lawful matrimony, illegitimate, okay? Now it says here, spurious, not genuine, false, all right, uh, superstitious, adulterate. In this sense, it is applied to things which resemble those which are genuine, but are really not genuine as a bastard hope, bastard honors. Now, this is what they're using. And I don't know why they have, I guess, baby, little baby, maybe said the word bastard in the song. Whoa, I don't remember. Um, but what we're going to do. Because this guy uh, is clearly trying to cause a lot of problems. I'm going to first go into this particular King James Version. Now, it says here, Deuteronomy 23, we're going to start go down to verse 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his 10th generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right. Now, we go into this word here. It's going to be momzer. Okay. What momzer basically means... Uh, basically a bad or illegitimate illegitimate seed okay that's essentially what it means in the hebrew all right now when you go down here in the definition it says a bastard a child of incest an illegitimate child this is what what it's referring to okay because see what he, these people use these negro lights use is they they don't like uh, the fact that an Israelite man, if he were to lay with a heathen, that the kids after would still be considered Israelites. OK, uh, so, for example, when you go into Judah, Judah had his sons with a Canaanite woman. OK, that's how the patriarchs of Judah were, were started. In fact, even the second generation after that was another Canaanite woman. OK, so the seed line it was was chosen from the man bro it's it's so those kids were still judites no different than joseph marrying an egyptian and having you know um, ephraim and manasseh you see these guys don't read the scriptures at all they they come here and they say these things not understanding what it's really referring to all right so it's not referring to c born of a jewish father and heathen mother or vice versa okay this is what they don't understand this is what they're pushing okay they're pushing the part c OK, and then when you ask him about what happened on the plantations and what happened with some of the people uh, that are descendants of the slave master through their father's side over here in, in the Americas, these guys say, oh, well, look, they're accepted. They're Negro. So these guys don't know what they're talking about, man. This particular scripture is referring to a child of incest, OK, which is the first definition and outline of biblical usage, which is the first time the word actually comes up. OK. Now, we're going to go back to the third verse, okay, because this is how Ammon and Moab, Moab were formed. It says, an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Okay, why? Because for one, they, were, they came out of that particular union. All right, Lot and his daughters had Ammon and Moab, okay? You can read that story in Genesis. And that's how Moab and Ammon came about. Their name literally means uh, the son of my father or a child of my father. When you go into the meaning of Ammon, all right, Ammon, which the, uh, of my people, all right, and then basically Moab, same thing. When you go into the into the meaning of Ammon and Moab, that's what it means. In fact, let me see if I'm able to pick, pull it up. Okay, we go into Ammon. Okay, I want to get the Strong's number for Ammon. I don't know why it's doing that, because it's doing the Ammonite. But let's see if we can get, because um, usually we'll have the root word. There it is. All right, so here's the root word, okay? And the son of Lot, and it basically means son of my relative, son of my kindred, okay? Meaning son, really son of my own people which is her father, all right, 
she was just so basically it was an incest baby okay that's just basically the uh, Ammon was named now we're going to go into Moab as well okay and I believe it's going to say something to that same effect so let's go to the root okay so basically of the father all right because Abba, okay, means father, okay, meaning that she says that this is the son of my father, okay, because she was the own, those are only daughters, okay, and this is incest, okay, this is actually the first showing of a people born through incest, and that's the reason why when you go back to verse three, it says an Ammonite and a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, okay, because this is line upon line. That's the reason why both of them say 10th generation, 10th generation in second verse and third verse. OK, so, you know, this guy over here, he's he's uh, causing a lot of issues when he's uh, when he's doing this. OK, because he doesn't know the scriptures. He's over here pushing this false uh, doctrine. He really doesn't understand because these Negro lights, they're obsessed with the optics. All right. Rather than the, the acts of righteousness and what the truth of the scriptures really say. So we're going to get more on this thing because these Negro lights and their doctrine has to be utterly destroyed. And uh, they're basically making it known that they want to be, you know, to be dealt with right in a in a way that they won't be able to be ha handled. And they'll be broken without remedy by the word of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So hopefully this is edifying. And again, I want to give all praise and glory to our Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Peace, mercy and blessings be abound to the hopeful elect. Shalom.